Henner's original Adventures of Indiana Jones line featured a selection of action figures and toys based on the 1981 film Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the range remains one of the most underrated toy lines of the 1980s. The figures were very well detailed for the time, and the mini playsets and the single vehicle release were supremely accurate to the movie. Yet despite this praise, Kenner's Adventures of Indiana Jones did not resonate with children in 1982, and the line was a retail failure. Fast forward to 1984 and LJM produced a range of just three Temple of Doom action figures, and their limited offering was likely due to concerns over how poorly Kenner's line had performed just two years earlier. The finite selection of figures available from LJM was a real disappointment for this Indiana Jones fan, because I've always wanted a short round figure. And that's because he is the second best character in the franchise behind Indiana Jones himself. You call him Dr. Jones! But I don't want to pay 20 grand to get my hands on an unreleased prototype short round figure. So when I learned that Hasbro was producing a three and three quarter inch scale short round for their new Indiana Jones retro collection, I knew I was going to pick one up, even though I could tell I wouldn't enjoy it for long. A bit like when I grab a cheap takeaway from the dodgy curry house down the road, knowing full well that I have explosive diarrhea in the morning. <laughs> In fact, the entire Indiana Jones retro collection is a poorly made, aimless mess, like the toy equivalent of the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And I want to figure out where it all went wrong and where it's headed in the future. Come with me, toy fans. Hey, toy fans, my name is Tony, and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. For the first wave of Indiana Jones retro collection figures, Hasbro offered us Indiana Jones, Marion Ravenwood, Tote, the German mechanic, and Belloc in ceremonial robes. We call him Belosh. Five reproduced figures that all appeared in the original Kenner line, and aside from Indiana Jones, the rest of these figures are already peg warming in stores, destined for the bargain bin. All of these figures have been manufactured using the same type of soft gummy plastic. A, a very plasticized um, plastic. This is the same type of plastic that Hasbro used on the Star Wars retro collection figures, and they're also oddly oversaturated in color with the worst offender being the German mechanic, whose skin is literally bright orange. I mean, he looks like a Oompa, 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 dee dee. If I were to rank the Indiana Jones films from best to worst, it would literally be in the order that they were released. With Raiders being first, Temple of Doom coming second, and Last Crusade getting the bronze medal, with Kingdom of the Crystal Skull not even worthy of mention. And I can hear you all now saying, what, this guy thinks Temple of Doom is better than Last Crusade? Is he crazy? Well, hear me out for a second. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is a really good film, but it is not an Indiana Jones movie. As soon as the filmmakers decided to introduce a continuity to the films, they broke the very framework that the lead character was designed to operate in. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is an odd couple action comedy, and not the type of serialized adventure of the week thrill ride that the franchise was originally conceived to be, with its pulp hero at the heart of each episode. I don't go to an Indiana Jones film for humanity. I don't go to an Indiana well, Jones I mean, film for convincing father-son relationships. But if it I isn't, go for it... action and stunts. With this in mind, I've never really had any desire to collect Last Crusade toys, especially since there were none available at the time of the film's release. But if I did collect them, I'd definitely want to own a motorcycle and sidecar, the biplane, and most of all the tank. Yet we know Hasbro isn't going to give us those toys, and to date they've only announced three Last Crusade action figures for the retro collection. On the flip side, I have every single toy that Kenner made based on Raiders of the Lost Ark, so the first wave of retro collection figures are useless to me, and unless Hasbro is going to come out with a three and three quarter inch scaled flying wing, there is nothing else I really need in this collection. It is in my Temple of Doom collection where I see the biggest gaps. I have all three of the LJN figures and the vintage lunchbox and thermos, and that's about it. And to compound my frustration further, these figures are wildly out of scale with the more expansive range of figures offered by Kenner. So this is why I picked up the Temple of Doom Indian short round figures from the retro collection. But as soon as I acquired them, I immediately started regretting my decision. Just like that dodgy curry. <laughs> The Temple of Doom retro style indie only looks like Kenner's vintage figures if you stand five feet away and squint your eyes. The plastic used in its manufacture doesn't have the same look, or more importantly the same feel as the vintage Kenner figures. But this doesn't surprise me, given the fact that I had similar complaints about Hasbro's Star Wars retro collection. This figure is based on the way Indy looked in the third act of Temple of Doom, complete with his shirt that has one sleeve ripped off and the bandage wrapped around his right hand. The biggest sin though is that Hasbro tried to make his shirt look like it was coming untucked, 
and instead made him look like he has a muffin top waist. Harrison Ford was in the best shape of his life when he filmed this movie, and Hasbro gave him an action figure that looks less like Indiana Jones and more like Peter Griffin. You betrayed the shareholders! I mean, what kind of people at Hasbro are endorsing this stuff? Dw Dwight has accidentally activated his 2008 whip. To add insult to injury, Hasbro only gave this figure a single accessory in the form of a thuggy machete and failed to give him his shoulder bag or whip. This is despite the fact that he uses his shoulder bag to carry the Sankara stones during this part of the movie and the fact that they have already tooled up the shoulder bag accessory for the Last Crusade indie figure. You want the stones? Let them go! And why in the hell didn't they give him his whip accessory? Indy uses his whip extensively in these scenes, and the figure has the whip hook on his belt. But no, Hasbro went cheap on this one. Really, really cheap. You cheap very big! The short round figure is one of the better looking offerings in this overall range, and I can forgive the lack of knee articulation given his smaller stature, even though he should be a lot shorter than what he is here. But Hasbro really should have painted the New York Yankees logo on his cap. Perhaps they couldn't for licensing reasons, but its omission really detracts from the overall look of the figure. The obvious cost cutting made on the Temple of Doom Indy is also my biggest gripe with the short round action figure, as he should have come with much more than just a flaming torch accessory. When Kenner produced their Yoda figure for the Empire Strikes Back range of toys, they gave him four accessories to make up for the fact that customers were paying the same retail price for a much smaller figure. Yoda comes with a soft goods robe, a belt, a walking cane and a plastic snake, and there was only one other figure in the entire line to come with this many accessories, and that was Endor Leia. That is unless of course you include the removable limb C-3PO figure and you consider his body parts to be accessories. Kind of like what Hasbro did when they were pimping their G.I. Joe classified Sergeant Slaughter. Hasbro is admittedly trying to emulate the vintage style with this product line but they're not making the same kinds of decisions that Kenner would have made back in the day and that's a major drawback. Even the photo of Short Round on the card back shows him carrying Indy's gear over his shoulder and he has Indy's whip hanging from his neck and these are the accessories that he should have come with, as well as the torch. At least if Short Round was packed in with the whip, then the fact that the Temple of Doom indie figure doesn't have one would make that pill a little easier to swallow. It also would have been nice if Hasbro had offered us a Willie Scott figure, so we could complete the trio of heroes. But given the high volume of Marion Ravenwood figures now peg warming in targets all across the US, I'm guessing they're reluctant to produce another female figure for this line. Oh my god! Hasbro's poor choices regarding accessories have continued to hamper their Last Crusade figure offerings as well. Take the fan channel exclusive Last Crusade Indiana Jones figure. He comes with a pistol, a shoulder bag and the grail cup. And I have no issue with the inclusion of any of these items. It's what's missing that frustrates me the most. Once again, Indy doesn't have his whip. Does Hasbro really expect us to purchase multiple Raiders Indies just so we can deck out our hero figures with the whip accessory? I certainly hope not since the handle of this whip is way too big for the first figure to actually hold. And making this decision even more baffling is the fact that every indie figure they have released so far has the spring action feature built into his arm. A feature originally devised by Kenner so that the figure could draw his pistol <laughs> and crack his whip. A unique extending Indiana Jones is a hero so iconic that he's recognisable by his silhouette alone, and the two elements that firmly establish this outline are his hat and his whip. <laughs> These kinds of dumb decisions just blow my mind. <laughs> then we have Henry Jones Sr, and while this figure does look acceptable, he only comes with his umbrella, and not with his briefcase or grail diary. If Hasbro can give the Last Crusade indie figures three accessories, there's no excuse for packaging Henry Jones Sr. with only one, especially when this figure costs $3 more than the other figures in the range, and that price hike is just criminal. That's for blasphemy. And what about the Last Crusade Sala? Hasbro have packed him in with Indy's revolver, even though he never carried it in the movie. There I am, but this time equipped with a gun. Sala did briefly hold a completely different pistol in the Grail Temple, and I guarantee you that Hasbro didn't want to spend the extra money on tooling up that specific pistol, so they took the cheap option once again. I think I threw the doll away. My gripes about the quality and accessories aside, there is a much bigger problem here that needs addressing, and it concerns the line as a whole. And that's the line's purpose. It doesn't seem to have one. 
Currently, this line is a very small random selection of characters from three of the five Indiana Jones films, and I seriously doubt that we'll get many more. Given Hasbro's track record with the Star Wars Retro Collection, I can guarantee you that they won't go back and make the rest of the figures from the original line, and they certainly won't produce the playsets and vehicles that are the critical additions needed if you want to turn this gaggle of action figures into a fully realised toy collection. If you question the purpose of this toy line in online groups, some people will say that it's an opportunity for people to acquire the carded figures without paying the high collector prices for the originals. But that exercise is even more futile than trying to understand Hasbro's decisions regarding accessories. The cardbacks are just as flimsy as the ones used on the Star Wars Retro Collection, and they will not stand the test of time. Especially since the Temple of Doom figures are notorious for having the bubbles fall off the card while they are literally hanging from toy store pegs. Yet hanging from pegs they are, and with the exception of Indiana Jones himself, the first wave of figures are the biggest culprits when it comes to clogging up store shelves. At least in that respect, Hasbro have succeeded in capturing that retro feeling. Indiana Jones toys peg warming toy aisles, it's like the 1980s all over again. <laughs> Son of a bitch. To coincide with the release of the new movie, Indiana Jones and the Fail of Destiny, Hasbro have recently published another Indiana Jones fan stream on their YouTube channel. And this particular stream provides the strongest indication yet regarding the fate of the retro collection. Previous Indiana Jones fan streams have shown reveals for both the 6 inch scaled adventure series and the 3 and 3 quarter inch scaled retro collection. But this most recent piece of content did not include anything new for the retro collection. They also made mention that the 6 inch scaled adventure series is very robust the most robust series in the line this year. In this context, the term robust is obviously the latest corporate buzzword that they like using at Hasbro headquarters. Obviously a, a robust toy line. The most robust series. Which was pretty robust. And what this means is the six inch scaled figures are the best performing Indiana Jones products at retail. Personally, I don't think the adventure series figures are very good at all. The face sculpt on their Raiders indie look truly awful. And there are far too many suited old guys with dodgy knees in this line. However, I did pick up a couple of the Sala figures from the first wave, because with a little kit bashing, they do make for an excellent Al-Qaeda bomb laying team. Ah, oh, decker decker decker. Yet the designer's statement that the adventure series is the most robust series in the line this year is Hasbro admitting to the fact that the six inch range is outperforming the retro collection at retail. And while you don't need to be as smart as Indiana Jones to figure that out, it also doesn't mean that the adventure series is performing well either because corporations never tell the truth. And all these guys are clearly reading words that were written down for them on the teleprompter by the corporate PR team. It is just two days until the first new Indiana Jones movie in 15 years, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. We're obviously excited. I'm more excited than I normally am. So let's kick things off by taking a quick look at the latest trailer. In actual fact, the evidence shows that both of these lines are seemingly bombing at retail just like the Dial of Destiny will at the box office. And I'm certain that Target is already sick of stocking defective product that is literally disintegrating on shelves before customers can purchase them. And I guarantee you that they're talking to the buyer who purchased this trash wholesale and telling him that He chose poorly. Couple all of this with the fact that there were no three and three quarter inch scale Dial of Destiny reveals during this stream, just two days before the theatrical release of the movie and that the Hasbro G.I. Joe team have announced that their 3 and 3 quarter inch range is being put on hold until further notice, and the news that there won't be any more Indiana Jones reveals at San Diego Comic-Con, and the fate of the retro collection is becoming very clear. The most frustrating thing for me is that I could see this line failing from the very first announcement, and it makes you just want to bang Hasbro's corporate head against a brick wall. The original line, again with the exception of Indiana Jones, became a line of peg warming action figures, because unlike Star Wars, which had an ensemble cast of heroes, and children were just as happy whether they received Luke, Han, Chewie, or even a Stormtrooper, no one in 1982 was crying out for a Marion Ravenwood figure in a frilly dress. It was an issue that significantly contributed to the failure of the original line, yet Hasbro thought they'd do the same thing all over again and get a different result, and that, dear viewer, is the definition of insanity. Mark my words, Hasbro's Indiana Jones retro collection is practically dead and buried, and I'd like to say it was fun while it lasted, but it wasn't. I know there'll always be a few randos out there who weirdly think that I shouldn't make videos about toys that I don't like, but they're completely missing the point. 
I love Indiana Jones and I really love collecting Indiana Jones figures, but I only want to collect good Indiana Jones toys from lines that truly fill out a display space in my collection. And the retro collection isn't ticking any of those boxes. So I'm making this video in the vain hope that Hasbro might start listening to the fans and start giving us the types of toys and toy lines that we deserve. As it stands now, Hasbro's Indiana Jones Retro Collection is a low quality lackluster toy line without a purpose. And while I wanted to say something quippy about the quest to collect these figures, Indiana Jones has already said it better. Just uh, one more useless experience. So thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, you can click the links up here to check out some of our other videos about Indiana Jones. Or subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or I don't know, I'm just making it up as I go.